Oh, I am just going to ask. I see that a lot of you are muting yourselves as you join. You should be muted as you join, um, but just that you keep um, your mics muted as we go through this presentation. Um, it can be a little distracting uh, if we've got a lot of a lot of background noise, dogs barking, dinner being made. We know all the stuff that happens. Um, so just make sure to keep keep an eye on that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kick things off. Uh, my name is Melissa and I am one of the co-owners of Women Who Explore. And we're super excited to have you guys here. We're super excited to have Glenn from Gossamer Gear here um, to talk to us about going lighter whenever you're backpacking. Um, I have to say this probably would have been a good presentation for me to have um, before some of my other uh, backpacking trips. There was some tips. I watched his uh, video and that would have been handy, Glenn, to have a few of those tips before packing some heavy, heavy items. Um, but uh, I'm going to be managing the chat room and we're going to ask that if you have a question during the presentation, uh, just go ahead and drop it in the chat and I'm going to be keeping an eye on those. Um, and if there's any like technical difficulties or anything, just drop it in there. I'll be looking. We're going to ask that all the questions are saved until the end. So you can either save it yourself or if you think you might forget, drop it in the chat and I'll keep it for you and ask at the end. Um, but we'll have plenty of time at the end uh, to um, ask all the questions you want. Uh, we do have some fun stuff to give away. Um, so Gossamer Gear is going to be giving away the Minimalist 19 bag, um, as well as a Bumster. Um, Glenn has a book that will be coming out shortly. So we're gonna be giving away a few of those. And I'm gonna throw in some Women Who Explore Kula Cloths uh, to some of these giveaway uh, packages. Um, so make sure that you pay attention to, I'm just going to say, make sure you pay attention to the presentation because we will be asking questions at the end and that's how we're going to be doing the giveaway. Um, all right. I think that's kind of the basics. Um, Glenn, I'm just going to pass it over to you and, uh, let you get started on your presentation. I'm excited. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Melissa. Um, it's kind of weird cause I can't see you cause I'm in screen share mode here, but. Uh, I will go through, and then at the end, I'll get to see all your smiling faces when we go to questions. So we're going to talk today about uh, how to go lighter. Oops. And some control issues here. Let's see. Hmm. As soon as I figure out how to forward this. It's a little bit different whenever you've got screened or like the recording and screen sharing. Oh, and as an FYI, I just want to let everybody know we are recording this. So if you do not want your face seen, um, just going to let you know, Melissa McHugh, you are for me right below Glenn. Um, so <laughs> you're going to be front and center in the recording. <laughs> um, if you don't want to be in it, then you can turn your camera off. Otherwise you're all good. That's strange. I lose control when I thought this worked when we just did it. We it did just work. Did the arrows work? If you press just like the left oh, or the right arrow. Yeah. Okay. Just lost contact there or something. Okay, so um we're going to, this is just kind of an outline of, of what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to uh, point you to where you can find additional resources um, after the talk. We're going to talk about the benefits of going lighter. Uh, we're going to go through the steps to lightening your pack weight. And during that, we'll talk about the big three. We'll discuss uh, why you should think about gear and techniques when you think about um, lightening your pack weight. And then I'll cover the two most common objections to going lighter, and then we'll open it up for all your questions. So uh, in terms of additional resources, I've gathered a lot of these um, at my website, glennbenpesky.com. Um, there's a tab for resources that includes tips and advice, which has uh, articles that go into more depth on sleeping pads and sleeping bags, first aid and food thoughts. Uh, there's also under videos, a number of what's in my pack videos, 
um, where I go through and you can see how it's changed uh, through the years, um, all the items in my pack. And then of course under gear lists, there's detailed gear lists for different trips. So, um, you know, if you want more detail, uh, that is uh, definitely available. Okay, so benefits of going lighter. Um, it allows for greater participation. Um, not everybody can carry a 70 pound pack. Um, so if you can get your pack weight lighter, it allows people who otherwise couldn't go backpacking to get out of the wilderness. Um, it's easier to redistribute gear. Uh, this picture of me, I uh, was in actually Buckskin Gulch um, and my wife, Francie, uh, her arthritis was acting up. And so I ended up carrying my pack and her pack. Um, but since we were both packed very light, it wasn't a problem. If we both had heavy gear, that would have been an issue. Um, carrying less weights can be safer um, in terms of uh, not straining your body. Um, it's less gear to keep track of um, and allows you to go further into the backcountry. Many of us only have limited vacation time. And so if you only have three or four days and you can do 20 miles a day instead of five miles a day, um, you can plan entirely different trips. And allows you to be more engaged with the backcountry. Um, you know, as you get more comfortable with it, um, instead of focusing on all the gear and stuff to keep you keep the backcountry, the wilderness away from you, um, you can be a part of it. And it can save you money. Now, probably you'll spend some money getting your gear lighter, but once you get your kit lighter, um, you tend not to be um enticed by new gear because it's probably heavier than what you have. So um, disclaimers and bias. I've, I'm not an Uber hiker, uh, of hike only that's probably a little more than this now, but a few thousand miles. Um, uh, my typical trip is only three to four days really haven't done much over three weeks. A lot of these ideas are not original. They're things I've noticed other people doing. Um, a lot of it boils down to personal choices. Um, so what is right for me may not be right for you. And remember to be safe, you know, don't uh, make changes slowly um, as you gain experience. Um, my bias, because when I'm in the wilderness, I like to walk and cover ground, um, is that the greatest comfort for me is a light pack. Um, and we'll talk about that a little more later. So the steps to going lighter uh, is are knowing what your gear weighs and then looking for multiple use items. Uh, taking less stuff and of the stuff you take, take lighter stuff, um, increasing your knowledge and skills. And then uh, you can also change your backpacking style. Um, so it's important not to pack your fears. Um, we all have a tendency, you know, if we were cold on the last trip, we pack a bigger jacket on the next trip. Um, just be sure to evaluate each trip on its own. And as you gain experience, this will be, be easier. So the first step is to buy a scale and you'll probably end up with more than one. Um, the most important equipment you need to lighten your pack is a scale because you need to know where you're at before you can make changes. So take all your gear out and you will probably be surprised by how much of it there is to start with. Then weigh it all and uh, put all that on a spreadsheet uh, and then rank it by weight and see the heavy stuff kind of float to the top or the bottom, depending on how you sort it. Um, observe that and analyze it, and then use that as a basis for making changes. So one of the first things you can do is look for multiple use items. Uh, if you take one item that serves more than one purpose, then you that means you can leave those other items uh, behind. Um, so in the, I don't know how many people got to see the the movie, um, how to go lighter, but, um, you know, a, a, a cook pot can be your cup, your plate, bowl, uh, mug can serve multiple purposes. Um, even something simple as a bandana, uh, can serve many multiple purposes. And, uh, soap, you know, you can use it for more than just soap. Um, this was even things that you have like a, this is a sleeping bag. And I sized up my 
jacket. I haven't been working out. I'm wearing my sleeping bag under my rain jacket um, because this camping up above Santa Barbara, this was so cold. I actually got water from a stream. And then by the time I got it to camp, it had congealed into a slushy because um, it was so cold that the only thing keeping it liquid was the fact that it was flowing. And once you stop that, it started to freeze. So that was a cold night. Um, so once you've looked for multiple use items, uh, then think about taking less stuff. Uh, in the video, Jackie had a huge ton of stuff compared to just the physical amount of stuff that I had. Uh, and this can involve taking less items and smaller quantities of some of the items. So for instance, for eating, um, a spoon will do it. I figure if I can't eat it with a spoon, I'm not hungry enough. And then also taking smaller quantities of uh, the items you do take. So whether it's uh, water treatment, soap, uh, sunscreen, lotion, um, look for travel sizes in drugstores is a, a, a good way to do that. Um, I tend to collect small bottles to decant things into. And the website minimus.biz has great um, assort, huge assortment these days of smaller kind of travel size quantities of things. Um, and even like your, you know, don't take a huge dental floss, take a small dental floss. Um, that's another place you can get um, smaller quantities of things is get samples at your, you know, at your dermatologist and your dentist of, of little toothpastes and, and little sunscreens. And then of the stuff, you know, once you have all your utensils down to one spoon, take a plastic one or a bamboo one, not a metal one. So work to get the stuff that you do take the lightest you can possibly take. Um, you know, when it's really, really dark out there, you really don't need that much light um, to get you where you want to go. I've hiked hundreds of miles with a little photon micro light at night. Um, taking lighter stuff, once you've lowered your pack weight, assuming you've got average ankles um, and knees, maybe uh, you can take running shoes instead of boots, which will take a huge weight off your effective what you experience. And then some of the stuff is not really expensive. You can, you know, cut down a jack-in-the-box cup to, to make a very lightweight plastic cup. Uh, stoves, um, you know, there's a lot of lightweight stoves, but even the weight of the canister can add up. Um, and so uh, alcohol stoves or solid fuel or esbit stoves or caldera setups is a way to, to shave weight um, when you're cooking. Increasing your knowledge and skills. And this is an area, so your brain weighs the same no matter how much you stuff into it. Um, so this is a way to get smarter, um, which can reduce weight because a lot of the weight you carry is for unknowns or risks or things you don't know about. So the more information you have, the better you can fine tune your gear and what you actually take. Um, and that can include the sources of information these days. Uh, you know, there's a lot of hiker, hiker journals. You've got maps, guidebooks, um, apps sometimes. Um, and it depends a lot on what kind of trip you're doing. Um, if you're hiking along the John Muir Trail in August, um, that's a different margin than if you're hiking through the middle of Alaska by yourself. Um, Trip planning, thing, knowing things like weather, and the temperature range, you know, um, so you know how how big a sleeping bag you need and what kind of jacket you need to take and, you know, whether you need long underwear or not. Um, water, if you're hiking in uh, kind of the desert area, southwest, um, water will end up being a huge weight. And so um, it's also pretty necessary. So if you don't know if there's going to be water at the next source, you kind of have to assume there isn't and carry extra water. So the more information you can have about water sources, uh, particularly updated information, like on the far out app, you know, where you can see, oh, someone was there two days ago and the water was flowing, um, that can save you weight. And knowing how many hours of daylight you have is, is a great um, thing to know. You know, if you know you're going to be hiking a lot at night, maybe you pack a different flashlight. 
one way <clears throat> to lower your pack weight is to have other people go through your gear um, because uh, other people have a dispassionate view of what you need. Um, so they may be happy to tell you things that you don't need out of your gear. And then educate yourself on on how to deal with things you're likely to find in the backcountry. Um, what I call ninja first aid, or you know how to treat first aid with what you have available. Um, I have a pretty minimal first aid kit, but most of the time I don't use it for me. It's used for someone else, and much of the time it's used for someone else that has a a much bigger and heavier first aid kit, but it doesn't happen to have the one thing that they need to fix their problem. Um, physical conditioning, again, as you're, if you're stronger, that helps prevent injuries and gives you more capability uh, to do less or do more with, with less. Navigation skills, um, you know, if you can prevent getting lost, you don't need extra food for wandering around lost for extra days. And then equipment skills, make sure you know how to use the gear that you're taking. Um, I'm amazed that some people leave on trips without actually setting up the shelter they're going to take at home. Um, and then be intentional hikers, you know, learn from your own trips. Um, as you take more and more trips, you know, take a, take a, use a gear, use a checklist and take notes during trips of, you know, what did I use? What didn't I use? Um, what did someone else have to eat that looked really good, better than anything I had? Um, and then review those notes before, before you take trips again, so you can take the advantage. One way to save weight in your pack, um, which doesn't really involve gear is changing your backpacking style. Um, kind of the traditional style is hike all day and then set up camp and cook dinner, oftentimes in the dark if it's been a long day. Um, and the problem with this is you're sitting around in the coldest part of the day. Um, so I'll often take my main break in the afternoon. You can dry your gear out if you, your tent got wet or sleep bag got damp the night before. Um, you know, if it's two or three in the afternoon, you can have a big meal. You can cook near water where maybe you don't want to exactly camp because of bear activity or something like that. You can even take a little nap or relax when the sun's out and it's nice and warm. And then you can pack up and hike on until you actually camp. Um, and at that point, you don't have to cook dinner because you've already done that. So you just have a, a light, cold meal. Um, you don't need water other than to drink that night and the next morning. You don't need water for cooking and washing up. And because you're not cooking and washing up, there's less smells for bears or rodents or uh, raccoons or anything else. And you don't need a lot of extra clothes because um, you're just going to stop hiking and then hop in your sleep bag. So when you weigh all your gear and put it on a spreadsheet, and if you rank by weight, uh, you will likely see these three items kind of float to the top as the heaviest items in your, in your gear. Uh, and that would be the pack, the tent, and sleeping system, either sleeping bag or quilt. So my theory of pack weight reduction is uh, kind of like a pinata. You want to make your first swing count and get some candy on the floor. So obviously the the heavier items are an opportunity to to save some weight. Uh, the average pack may be a little less these days, but easy to find packs that are four or five pounds empty. Um, and just for reference, my base pack weight uh, all my gear, except for food and water, is under five pounds. So that's my sleeping bag, tent, pack, clothes, cooking, um, first aid, repair, everything, um, under five pounds. The Murmur Pack, um, which is the one I happen to use at Gosman Gear, weighs eight ounces empty. Um, and there are definitely others, uh, you know, Z-Packs, Mount Laurel Designs. Um, there's there's lots of options. Uh for under two pounds, um, you can get a very full-featured pack that has all the features you'd expect, um, but just not the weight of all the extra bells and whistles and, and overbuilt. So for a tent, I'm surprised I still see these days, you know, described as an ultralight tent, something like four pounds. 
Um, if you can get comfortable with the skills, and we'll talk about that later, uh, of going with a tarp, um, you can cut that down to eight ounces, or I actually have a tarp I usually, I mostly use if, um, if there aren't bugs that weighs under three ounces. Um, and you can get, you know, single wall tents with bathtub floors and everything for about a pound. Um, so the technology is there. Uh, this is the Gossamer Gear uh, 1. It's a one-person tent. Use your hiking poles to set it up. Uh, includes bug netting, bathtub floor, uh, 18 ounces, just over a pound. Uh, the Solo Tarp, under a half pound. Um, and this is a new tent, actually, that we're just um, it's going live September 1st. Uh, I created it for a, a bike packing trip I did where I knew it was going to be buggy. So this is a one person tent with full perimeter netting, uses trekking poles or uh, tent poles if you're on a bicycle. Um, and it only weighs 10 ounces. So there's, there's light options out there for your shelter. Then your sleeping system, uh, there's a, there's a bunch of different options. Um, whether you go with down or synthetic fill, uh, you know, down is going to be lighter and warmer for the weight. Uh, whether you go with like a blanket uh, or quilt versus a bag, and whether you have a, a zipper or half a zipper or no zipper, um, you know, you have to think about the fabrics, how heavy those are and whether they're breathable or not, which colors, which I know is important to some people, uh, whether or not it has a hood, and then what the temperature rating is. Um, and I will typically on a trip put my uh, Sunto watch outside um, during the night so I can check the temperature as I wake up so I can calibrate my sleeping bag. If I know that the night got down to 21 degrees and I was cold in my 20 degree bag, well, then I know, okay, for me, this is not really a 20 degree bag. Um, some options for uh, sleeping systems and uh, enlightened equipment, Katabatic gear, Western Mountaineering, Feathered Friends, all make good quality down products. This is going to be probably one of the more expensive areas to lose weight um, just because quality down bags are tend to be expensive. And speaking of cost, I mean, at some point, uh, depending on your financial situation, you kind of have to think about your dollars per ounce of reduction. Um, and, you know, if you have limited funds, go for where they're going to make the, you get the biggest bang for your buck, so to speak. So for instance, you know, if you plunk down 550 bucks on a new down bag and that saves you a pound, uh, you have spent 35 bucks to, to lose each of those ounces. $400 tent, but you save a couple pounds, you're down to $12 an ounce. And if you get a $200 pack, but it saves you four pounds, you're down to $3 an ounce. So, you know, keep keep that math into account as you're as you're lightening your gear uh i believe i still hold the record for the most money spent to lose weight in my pack when i had five thousand dollars worth of laser, laser surgery on my eyes so i could save two ounces of contact lens solution um, but there were other benefits obviously so besides the big three um we also will talk for a minute about the big two, which is food and water, uh, especially as you lighten your gear weight, um, more and more of the weight is actually going to be, depending on where you hike, uh, food and water. And so there are some strategies to help you uh, reduce the amount you carry there too. As far as food, uh, my rule is 100 calories per ounce. And then generally um, a pound and a quarter per day. Um, and this, one of the biggest things you can do to save weight on food is start weighing your food before and after every trip. Um, and then you will figure out what for you is the right amount of food per day. Um, so I don't, you know, I think about the meals and snacks and stuff like that, but uh, I put everything on a scale and weigh it. And depending on how many days, and I do fractions for partial days. Um, I know if I, from long experience, that if I take more than that, I'm just going to bring food back. And to me, that's that's unnecessary weight because I've carried it that whole way 
only to bring it back. Um, and then water, particularly in arid areas, uh, can be a, a huge, obviously water's heavy um, and also critically important. Things unwind pretty quickly if you're dehydrated. Um, so do your best to research water sources beforehand. Uh, you can, depending on what you're doing for treatment, you can sometimes drink an extra liter when you're at the water source to supercharge, um, which means you have to carry less. And then consider moving to a chemical treatment instead of filtering, um, which will typically save you weight. Um, I used to use Aquamira. Um, now I just use household bleach. And not everything about lightening your weight is about gear or it's, it's about gear, but also includes technique. Um, you can save uh, some weight, for instance, in going to a lighter tent, and it'll look alike and set up not too different from the tent you have now. Um, but to get less weight than that, you're going to have to pick up some additional skills. Um, with a pack, uh, on the movie, Jackie's pack weighed six pounds, I think, um, compared to the one pound the pack we gave her. Um but it involves some additional skills, um, you know, knowing how to adjust it, knowing how to pack it um, and taking better care of your, uh, you know, it's lighter fabrics. Um, so it requires some additional care. So there's just skills you need to make that move. Um, you know, moving to a tarp, you need to, you might need to know about uh, tying some knots. You might need to get smarter about site selection instead of just being able to plunk down anywhere. Um, and you might need to gain some skills on pitching compared to your traditional tent with a, a bunch of poles that you just put together. Uh, sleeping pad um, can require additional skills in terms of site selection. Uh, you know, you're if you've got a limited sleeping pad, you're probably looking for softer areas. Um, there's uh, less care involved in like a foam pad compared to an inflatable. Um, it will be warmer typically than an inflatable unless it's an insulated one. And then, you know, there are advanced things you can do like making a little foam donut to put under your tailbone or hip bone uh, if you sleep on your side to give you kind of double foam thickness just in the that area. Uh, you can also work to contour the ground a little bit um, in leave no trace uh, ethos, of course. Um, but if you're in sand or duff, you can scoop out a little depression um, for your butt, leave a little um, hump for your lumbar. And when you get that just right, it's better than any sleeping pad. So the objections that I commonly get fall into two categories, um, typically cat comfort and safety. And now as far as comfort, you know, it depends on how you do backpacking. Um, I like to walk all day when I backpack. And so for me, uh, I'm going to be most comfortable with the lightest pack because I'm walking all the time. Um, if you just want to hike for a few miles into a lake and hang out, it's not going to be as important. You may make different gear choices than, than I do. In terms of safety, um, I, and I'm not a medical professional, um, but I categorize kind of category, three general categories of injury and sickness in the wilderness. Uh, one is you're going to die no matter what you brought in your pack. Um, two, you will live no matter what you brought, although you might be very uncomfortable. Um, and the third category is something that you brought will make the difference of you living or dying. And it's my contention that there's very few items that fall in that category number three. Um, so first aid should be focused on, you know, what you generally expect to happen and what can you bring to deal with those. Um, factors to consider are the number and experience of people in the party. You know, if you have a bunch of experienced people, um, they may be less likely to get hurt or, you know, depending if they're very risky, maybe they're more likely to get hurt, but you may have people with medical training, um, 
consider your experience with that route in the same season. Um, it's to me, it's a different risk doing something I've done before in a season I've done before, you know, if I've done something in summer, but I'm doing it in winter, well, that's a different trip. And so it requires different thoughts about that. Um, whether you have bailout points or not. Um, I have a buddy, actually, I'm going to see this weekend who talked about a trip he did in Alaska uh, and he's just going cross country. He had a bush pilot drop his food um, at GPS locations that he gave him. Well, he gets to his next food drop and realizes it's a swamp. So he says, okay, the pilot didn't drop it in the swamp, obviously, but he didn't know where he dropped it and he had no way to communicate with him. So he spent about half a day kind of looking around, hiking around, see if he could figure out where the guy dropped it. He never could figure it out. So he had to hike for several days without food uh, because of that. So obviously that's a different kind of trip with a different risk profile um, than hiking along a trail with a bunch of people. And then the pack where the participants, I mean, as you saw from that earlier one, if everyone's traveling light, it gives you more options to distribute gear. If someone does twist an ankle or something like that, um, you know, you need to be smart. Um, they always say in the wilderness, you're only three bad decisions away from, from not coming out alive. Um, so don't reduce your pack weight in excess of your compensated experience. You know, as we talked about, a lot of these very lighter things require additional experience. So, you know, be cautious and make changes slowly as you gain that experience. And heavier packs are have their own safety considerations. You know, they increase strain on your body parts. Um, tired bodies stumble more and more likely to twist an ankle or or even break something. Uh, decreases the range of the party. Uh, if, if you need to put extra miles in to get somewhere, it's pretty hard if everyone's already maxed out with heavy packs and limits your ability to redistribute gear. Oop, just lost. Hmm. There we go. So that is um, what I had to present. And we will, I wanted to leave lots of time for the questions so that things that are on people's mind we can uh talk more about yeah so uh thanks for that because i actually have comments and questions as well i'll let other people ask their questions first um but i i kind of forgot to to mention the story you know at the beginning of how we even met glenn um so uh we led women who explore led a uh a, a getaway to perea canyon and buckskin gulch and on our last night, um, we just happened to run into Glenn with his party of ultralight backpackers. And it was fascinating because one of the gals, um, a new year brand, I think had some of your gear and she was so excited to meet you. Um, <laughs> she came over to me and, um, you know, was super excited. So we got a chance firsthand to look at tents and you know some of the gear that you had there amongst the people compared to like what we were hauling which was really interesting um but it, yeah it was kind of random that we just bumped into each other um in in like one of the world's longest slot canyons um all muddy and dirty you guys were i think just more or less starting and we were ending our trip um so we were going different directions but um yeah. i always thought that was kind of a, a serendipitous meeting that doesn't usually happen like that yeah, that's a, that's a trip I do every spring. I have a list of about 60 people um, that I send out a random trip announcement to and, you know, take six or seven on that trip. That particular trip where we met you was different in that everyone there was pretty much a hardcore ultralight geek. I mean, it was way more than any other trip. These were people that just through random chance had been really working on lightening their loads. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was, it was exciting to see the stuff. I, I know that I'd, I'd been working, I've been working towards lightning, um, my weight. I know my, my main backpack that I got years ago, um, does weigh in over, over five pounds. Um, I know, and it, it is a comfortable pack, but at the same time, it's a, it's a heavy pack. And so, um, one thing that I had noticed, because I did um, recently have an, a very light backpack, um, and I won't go into details, but we were required for this particular trip to use particular gear, 
And the backpack that we were given was ultralight, but the gear that we used was not necessarily. Hmm. So um, that I felt like, um, and I feel like it's worth mentioning that if you're maybe going ultralight, maybe the backpack is not the first thing, because if you're taking your heavier gear and tucking it into a bag, um, that, that is ultralight and doesn't have maybe the same structure that that can maybe, I found that that caused issues for me, um, that the two needed to go hand in hand, um, rather than having just the light bag. Um, I would have preferred having the lighter tent and all of that kind of gear first and cutting the, the weight in other places and then going to the bag. I don't know if you had anything to say about, about that in particular. Yeah. I mean, the, the bang for the buck, notwithstanding the, the, general best practice is to lighten that you lighten your pack last uh, for precisely the reason you mentioned. Um, you know, if you take all your heavy gear and put it in a light pack, one, it probably won't fit. And two, it won't be comfortable because it doesn't have the big suspension. It's designed for lighter load. So yeah, no, the pack should be kind of one of the last things you you change out. Yeah. It made, it made for a slightly diff more difficult track. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, um, I'm going to ask the questions that are in, uh, the chat. There's a couple questions here and then, um, I'll open it up. If anybody, you can feel free to drop more questions than I can ask them, or people can unmute themselves after I ask these and just feel free to ask the question yourself. Um, so Amanda, says in the Go Lighter video, you mentioned that you had published a backpack pattern online when you first started making them. Is that pattern still available? I just have to say, Amanda is quite creative. And um, are you gonna crochet or knit that, Amanda? Or <laughs> how, I'm just very curious because I, I definitely have a few um, crocheted items from her. <laughs> she says she'll sew it. Um, so is that pattern still available? Uh, it is, it's actually, um... It's actually uh, on my website, glenvanpesky.com, and I'm trying to remember where it is. I think it's somewhere under resources, um, but there are the instructions that you can use to measure out um, and and make that make that G4 backpack. There's still I still see some around. Every now and then, I'll be giving a talk, and someone will come up with this old pack thing. I made this from the pattern you had on the internet, so. Oh, I'm super curious. Uh, Amanda is an ambassador for Northern Colorado Group, and um, she's actually hosting our ambassador retreat um, at her family's place in Wyoming. Um, so we're all headed to Story, Wyoming soon. So Amanda, I expect on top of everything to have that pack sewn and presented to us next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, all right. She could, she could probably make, <clears throat> I will, I always caution people when they make a pack, it's like, it probably won't be the last pack you make. Cause that's what happened to me. I made a pack. And then as you're hiking with, you think, ah, I could make this a little better. You know, it could be a little smaller, a little taller, or put a pocket here or take this out. And so, uh, Amanda, I look forward to seeing your second and third packs. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and then Wendy, she says, um, Jess, what are the best practices for a newbie tips on how to find people who want to go out with newbies since I don't have anyone who backpacks. Um, so Wendy, uh, do you mind stating like, where, where are you at? Where are you looking at backpacking? I, hi, I'm in uh, Southern California, but I spend summers in Lake Tahoe. And so I've done, I've gone on one backpacking overnight uh, trip and I just absolutely loved it. But then now I'm back in Southern California and just trying to find people who are interested in taking someone who has not really doesn't have any experience. I mean, there's a lot of uh, learning and uh, it does take someone who's up for that. Yeah, um, I, I think you're in the right place. Um, I think I might, uh, right. Glenn might have uh, recommendations, but um, I'm going to drop my email. And feel free to um, reach out. Um, I'm in Arizona. So I actually backpack in Southern California um, often and have recommendations and maybe we can connect. Um, yeah, and you're welcome to email me, just Glenn, G-L-E-N, at gossamergear.com. Um, 
there, I'm in Bend, Oregon now, but I spent many, many years in San Diego area. And there was a meetup group. I don't know if they're still active. I can check that was, was very active backpacking. Um, in a great program, probably it's still having in San Diego was the um, Wilderness Basics course. It was run by Sierra Club. They had a North County version and down San Diego version. And I um, presented there a couple of times, but they have a, a great program geared to absolute beginners. Um, you go get like a concentrated lecture on some aspect of backpacking, like I don't know, Thursday nights, whenever it is one night a week. And then they plan trips. You sign up for this. I mean, it's a, it's a great program, um, for, for getting involved when you know very little. Um, and then also, um, uh, off trail on track. Uh, and I can send you is a buddy of mine, Duncan Chung, and he runs, he's a super, super experienced ultralight backpacker, but has much more patience uh, than me and, you know, has that heart of an educator where he, he likes to explain things uh, to people. So um, his trips are also a great source. Perfect. And then, um, yeah, Wendy, definitely reach out um, and I can put you in touch. I know I see a lot of the people that are responding are actually our ambassadors. Um, Catherine here, Christina, um, Wendy. So, um, I don't think you're going to have a lack of people to maybe backpack with as long as you're maybe willing to drive just a little bit, maybe we can meet in the middle. Right. Right. Uh, which is totally fine. I'm yeah. just, I see some of these uh, people. I'm like, okay, so how do I find you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we will connect you, uh, for sure. And we can list any of these resources also that we're talking about. Um, this will be going out in an email. So if you haven't been writing things down, uh, you'll get this in an email. So, so don't worry about that. Um, Glenn, Wendy does want to know, um, Wendy Evans, um, she's in Bend. Uh, she's one of our ambassadors in Bend and she wants to know if you'll set up a backpacking event for the Bend group. <laughs> so, um, you're, you're getting, uh, asked to, to participate in women who explore events more often now. Um, yeah, tell her to get in touch. I mean, I, you know, we can, we can figure that out. Awesome. I know, like I said, Christina's in here and she's a fan of your Mariposa. I told you about earlier, your Mariposa yeah. bag. Um, and so, uh, and actually I didn't, I actually didn't know I, I had, I didn't know you lived in Bend. I'm sure you told me that I'll be in the Bend area next weekend. Um, oh. yeah. So I'll be there for we're not quite sure what we're doing. It de it's fire dependent. We were originally going to go to Smith Rock and go climbing, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Mm, yeah. Yeah. There's a. It's been been a little smoky. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice today, at least by standards of the last week. But yeah, hopefully it'll be clearing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the Mariposa versus the Gorilla. So my base weight is about well. Once I upgrade the pack, it'll be about 13.86 pounds. Um, the last place I need to drop weight is my backpack. So uh, my birthday is this week. I test drove a Mariposa because Mountain Shop has uh, them for rent. So I rented one this past weekend when we decided to take a siege on Mount Hood. Um, and it was amazing. I loved it. But could you highlight what the key differences are between the two? I'm still kind of torn. I think I'm leaning towards the Mariposa, but. Uh, yeah, the, the Mariposa main differences is the Gorilla um, has two. Um, you might want to check out the G420 also. Okay. Uh, if, you're, if you're ever in Bend, I have a lot of packs end up kind of in my basement that you can you know, try on, I don't know what they have at the mountain shop. Um, but, um, you know, that's a frameless pack. So it depends on how light you get all your other gear. Um, and I also have tents and stuff. You can, you know, if you want to try out what a lighter tent feels like uh, yeah, um, on that one, it's yeah. pretty, pretty nice, <laughs> pretty nice. Not as nice as the 10 ounce, uh, whisper, but yeah, pretty nice. Um, the so the the Mariposa is probably a little more traditional. It has the one larger pocket on the side that a lot of people put their tent and stuff in. Um, whereas the configuration on the gorilla is more traditional, kind of two 
uh, side pockets that you can put water bottles in. The grill is made out of tougher fabric. So a lot of times if people are going to be jamming down canyons or something like that, um, they think more of the gorilla. Um, there's some other things. The Mariposa has like a zippered top pocket, I think, in the flap uh, that the gorilla doesn't have, as I recall. I think the Mariposa also has the... Um... Was it the load, the load straps on the shoulders? Yeah. And I, uh, I think that was the biggest thing for me that I really like, because I'm a fan of, I do like those. You might, uh, Christina, I would actually advise waiting um, because we are completely redoing the Mariposa. Um, I got to see prototypes at PCT days these, uh, this year. Um, they've made it weight neutral. Um, but we're adjusting, um, really modifying the frame. So it's got a swivel built in now uh, so that your hips can move independent of your shoulders and it actually, the frame swivels. And we've got real load lifters where the the straps go lower, curve over your shoulder so that you can have those load lifters actually function. So I would wait. Um, <laughs> You know, we, uh, that might be, we got factory samples. We got people testing it. Um, I don't know. Could be six months, but I think it's going to be worth waiting for. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. Um, we have a question from Chris. Um, and they want to know, what do you do to protect, protect food in the back country? Um, so I know some of the the items, uh, you know, bear canisters. I one time in the Tetons borrowed the canister from the National Park Service, and I swear those things on their own weigh like ten pounds a piece. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I'm in Arizona. I don't use bear canisters, so we're like, we'll just borrow it. And man, those were really hefty. Um, and then in in Perea Canyon, we used the like the rat sacks. Um, which was like the metal mesh. Um, but what do you, what do you opt to use that would maybe be lighter weight? Uh, well, in pre, I don't do anything. Um, I actually use my food as my pillow, which I did have um, <laughs> one evening near the big cottonwood tree as you're going out to White House. Yeah. Um, I woke up suddenly with a mouse on my face because i think he had he was jumping trying to get on my food bag and he overshot and we were both very surprised um but generally there i'll just hang it in a tree if i'm not using it as a pillow um keep the rodents out um but i usually so this is my i i'm skilled at hanging food so if i'm not required to carry a bear canister and i will typically if i'm hiking an area where there are areas where you're required to carry a bear canister, I will check and try and do a, you know, try and map a route where I stay out of those areas, if, you know, unless I really want to go in there. Um, Cause it means for me, I have to get a different pack. I mean, I can't fit a bear canister in a, in a murmur. So maybe the four day one actually, but so yeah, this is just a garlic bag that I use to tie a rock in. And then, uh, you know, you can Google PCT method of bear hanging uh, bear bag hang. It's got a couple of carabiners on it, uh, some um, Kevlar rope that's flat so it doesn't cut into trees and it glides over them. So that's what I use to protect food. I would say having a um, class for hanging food is <laughs> it. It took me a while. It's a skill. Um, yeah, no, so it's, it's a fun. It's kind of stuff. evening entertainment. You know, watching people try and. Um, on the, I did a thousand mile bike packing trick on the great divide and my buddy, um, didn't, didn't really have any food hanging skills, but we were in bear country most of that trip and he's got a much better arm than I do. So, you know, he was, he was a star by the end of that trip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's definitely a skill. Um, Let's see, Chayla says, I used to live in Rayleigh and I'm in Nashville now, but I've hiked all the North Carolina state parks. Um, oh, what does this say? 
Uh, I started at the RA. Oh, she's answering a question. Never mind. Hold on. Um, someone's asking, they're on the East Coast, uh, Rayleigh, North Carolina, and she wants to know where one could try on um, one of your packs. Um, she mentions REI, Great Outdoor Provisions. Um, is there a place in Rayleigh or nearby in North Carolina where she can actually test out one of your packs? Uh, we have very limited dealers in this country, uh, Portland being one of them. There is one somewhere um, back east, but I don't know where it is. It, probably if they just write to um, customer service at Gossamer Gear, they'll let you know. Or you can just do Glenn at Gossamer Gear and I'll find out. I think there yeah. is one store on the AT somewhere that has our stuff. I know randomly I found your gear at a store in um, Denver at Farrell. Um, hmm. they have a, they have a whole wall of, of all of your bags. I was super excited to, to oh, test them out. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Cause if not, we're going to do some, some giveaways. I, I just have another question. Um, how do you, I guess, I mean, I could obviously Google this too, but since you're here, um, just distribution, like where um what you should put in first or what heaviest you know i'm thinking at the bottom or or so i could i could probably talk for 20 minutes just on that but that's <laughs> the problem with um asking an engineer question and i i do have to say christina i do appreciate that you said my base weight is about 10 point or 13.86 pounds i appreciate the two decimal points that's that's a good sign. But um, to answer your question, Wendy, on, yeah, so I think about um, how heavy and how bulky the items are. And generally, you want weight higher so that it's you're carrying it up rather than sagging down. Um, I will put my, and, and you also want to take into account when you're going to need to get at that item. So, you know, if you're going to be, you wouldn't want to put your lunch in like first thing, obviously, because you're going to have to unpack your entire pack to get at the lunch. So, you know, typically I'm putting my sleeping bag in the bottom because it's light. I don't use a stuff sack so it can expand to fill the space available in my pack. Um, and then it holds the weight up higher. Uh, and then I'll put things like my um, stove because I'm not going to use that till the end of the day. Uh, my tent, because again, I'm not going to access that till the end of the day. And then typically my food bag is after that because um, I'll take out um, snacks. Um, and so I'm not gonna be getting the food bag until lunchtime. Um, and then clothes on top of that because typically the clothes bag as conditions change, you know, I'm taking clothes off, putting jackets on, things like that. So that's the one that I keep with ready access. And that, at least with my pack works out in terms of packing. Another consideration is how quickly you might want to get at something. So for instance, like a first aid kit, you're probably hoping you don't access that at all, but there might be a situation where you want to get at it quickly and you don't want to be digging through a bunch of stuff, trying to figure out where it was. So there's some items that I keep handy and easily accessible, even though I'm not going to get at them in the course of a normal day. So hope that helps. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and there's actual, um, I can send you as well, like diagrams that kind of outline where you should be placing things in your pack for, you know, like Len mentioned, um, you know, whether it's, you know, weighing your pack down or if it's actually your your body's, it's helping to like carry the load um, a little bit more. So um, that could be something that we send, or I'm sure maybe that's on your website somewhere too. I'm not sure, Glenn. No. Um, I don't have enough stuff to, be working on the <laughs> yeah um all right well uh and if anybody has any more questions feel like while we're doing the giveaway because we have a few things um you can just pop back in in the middle of this um but the way we're going to do this is uh there's a bunch of questions that i have here so i'm just going to randomly choose a couple and whoever answers it first in the chat box um wins the prize so uh, I'm going to do, we're going to do the, the day pack, the 19 minimalist um, first. And I have to say, I'm a fan of a color, the color for that. I don't, a backpack, it does, is not required to be the color that I want. I go for function. 
but it's really helpful when I really like that, really like that color. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm gonna go for your question number three that you gave me, Glenn. Um, what does the big two refer to in the presentation? And he mentions the big two. What are the big two? What is that referred to? Food and water. Oh, you guys listened. All right, so food and water is the answer. And I saw the, oh gosh, uh, Wendy, uh, you get it. Yay, that's exciting. You were definitely paying attention. So um, I'm going to, you have my email. I dropped it in here. I'm gonna need you to send me your mailing address. You'll get a copy of, uh, well, so Glenn's book is, what is it? It's written, but it is not quite published yet. So it right. is coming out soon. So um, you will be getting a copy of his book as well whenever that comes out, but you get the backpack and the book and I'll send you a Kula cloth as well. Um, all right, so that's the first thing. Uh, item number two, uh, we've got the bumpster. And uh, do you use the bumpster at all whenever you do backpacking? Um, one of our guides had like a really ultralight backpack and then he had, he actually had the bumpster and um, use that for his like, snacks he had the little first aid um items you know for people and bits and pieces and he just used that while he was backpacking uh, lots of people like them i'm not a fan it's extra i mean it's relatively heavy for the volume i did uh for a friend of mine modify um a kumo i think pack and built it into the um built it into the waist belt. So her waist belt became uh, the bumpster. Yeah. Got it. Um, right. But otherwise for me, it's just like extra straps and stuff. And I don't usually even have a waist belt anyway, cause I'm not carrying, you know, I'm usually, if I'm going out for a trip, it's usually 12, 13 pounds with food and water. So it's not worth having a waist belt. So I just put stuff in my pockets. Gotcha. All right. So I'm just jotting this down. Um... All right, so let's do another one. Um, did you, ask, is, the oh, did uh, you ask the question for the bumpster or is that, that's coming? Uh, nope, that's coming. So that's, that's this question right here. I'm going with your question number seven. What's the most important piece of equipment you need to lighten your pack weight? Ah, Amanda. <laughs> yes, Amanda, I think you are the first one. Uh, scale is the right answer. That is the first thing that you need. Um, the most important piece of equipment, Amanda, I know your address. I'll get that, <laughs> get that to them. Awesome. You guys are killing it. All right. And let's do, um, do you want to give away a book as well? We'll just do a book on its own. And that'll also come with a cool cloth, which I'll send you earlier. And then whenever the book is, um, published, you'll get that sent. Sure. In time for like Christmas or post Christmas. <laughs> it, it won't be in time for Christmas. Okay. A little after. Well, not right. this Christmas anyway. Next Christmas. Next um Christmas. all right. Um okay. This one is going to be a little subjective. So uh there's lots of answers to this one. Um, give one example of a multi-use item. It could have been mentioned in the presentation or it could be something that you already, multi-use item. Brain, <laughs> Wendy. Um, let's see, scale sleeping. Shoot, which one was, oh no, the, hold on. Cup. Tristy Cole. I think I saw bandanas in there too. Yep, we've got cup, mug. Hiking poles cup, would be another one. Poles, shovel. I have to say, I did. I think on Women Who Explore, we shared a comic um, that was making fun of an ultralighter, uh, but it was that they use the um, basically the poop shovel because it just touches the dirt, and they use that also as their spoon. Um, just the fact that that's that's going just a little too far. I don't, um, you know, I I do carry. Um titanium chopsticks, uh, which I use to set up my tent and also to eat with instead of a spoon. So it's not All that right. far. So 
it's not that far. So it just one seems a little bit farther, even though it doesn't touch anything. It just has a definite. There is dirt, a yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm going to go with Trist, Tristy uh, Combs um, with the cup because the cup can be used as a bowl. The bowl can be used as a cooking. It can be used as all of the things, but all of those items um, definitely, definitely count. Um, if you are interested, uh, all of the people here in this group, um, I did drop my email in there. I am on Instagram, like message women who explore. If you want a women who explore sticker and you want to send me your, um, mailing address, I will send you a women who explore sticker for all the participants. So I can drop that in the mail to you guys. So, um, everybody gets a little something. Um, oh, we do have another question. What's a good upgrade from the Pilgrim 36? I'm not sure what the Pilgrim 36 is. Um, Jen, do you want to unmute yourself? It was a, um, a pack I bought in 2015 or 2016, and I've been carrying around ever since then. It's very small. It's like a roll top. Um, um, Oh, is it a Gossamer gear pack? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, that it sounds like the Murmur, which is what I carry. Yeah. That's a 36. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So it doesn't need an upgrade. No, but I mean, <laughs> when you say upgrade, what do you, what do you mean? Are you just looking for more space or has, have you put holes in it and you're just looking for something new? I'm just curious, like what, if any improvements have been made? Cause it's really great. Um, sometimes I think like maybe a little bit bigger, but I don't want to add weight. And so. You're yeah. speaking my language. Yeah. Um, it's changed a little bit over the years. Not a, um, not as much as some packs. Cause that's like my pack and it doesn't change unless I approve it. So, um, um, but if yours has like the little diagonal kind of um, slashes on the side that uh, for the hall loops, those have been upgraded. Um, so there've been a few upgrades. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'll check out the rumor. Okay. All right. Um, Isabel, you mentioned if we had stickers at events, it depends on what group you're in. Um, some ambassadors have stickers um, and give those out at events. It just really depends. So if you just let me know which group you're in, I might be able to, to better help you out there. Um, all right. I don't see any other questions. Is there anything else uh, before we go, Glenn, that you would like to mention or? Uh, feel free to email me, email me if you know there are questions that you didn't think of till after it ended. Um, and um, thanks for giving me a chance to talk about what I love to talk about most is lightening people's backs. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm definitely excited. Um, I have some ideas. I have trips coming up and um, doing enough backpacking trips that I'm I'm tired <laughs> and, and I do end up, sometimes we end up carrying people's packs or helping yeah. carry packs, um, whenever we do trips. So that, that is actually, we just did the tour du Mont Blanc and, um, you know, when you're having to, to, to spread some of the weight to help some people, it's, it's definitely gets heavy, um, really quick. So, um, we're definitely looking forward to that, but, uh, Really appreciate you taking the time. Super excited to to have you on and um, looking forward to maybe do another class or something in the future. Um, super excited about that. Sure. And anyone that, you know, lives in Bend wants to, you know, text me ahead of time, make sure I'm here and, you know, try on some packs and stuff. I don't have, you know, this every size of every pack, but I have a pretty good selection here for loaning out. So. Ooh. <laughs> I wish I was closer, but maybe, maybe I'll, I'll shoot you a text. Maybe whenever, um, I'm headed your way next weekend. So, yeah. uh, maybe I can see some of the packs in person. Um, and then again, just want to reiterate for everybody that, um, there will be an email, um, with a link to this, uh, 
presentation, somebody did ask if they were able to receive a copy of the slides. Um, we are doing a, a video, but they mentioned about taking notes. I wasn't sure if you give out copies of the slides or not. So just wanted to ask that as well. Um, yeah, I can, <clears throat> I can just print them as a PDF and get that to you. Okay, if anyone's perfect. Interested. And then I'll make sure the you know websites that we mentioned and emails and all that stuff is attached. So you guys can do extra research and look up all the things. Um, yeah. Wendy Evans says she'll be reaching out to get something set up and bend. So, okay. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Super excited to have you here. And thank you again to Glenn for um, putting on this class for us. You bet. Awesome. Take care. All right. Thanks.